All right, now we're recording, so behave. All right, left off yesterday, talking about the blade angle has a pronounced effect on the mass of air moved as well as engine RPM. And I think what I said is you don't notice, it's easier to explain it in a fixed pitch prop than it is a constant speed, just because of the way they work. But I um, guess I could do the same thing with constant speed. If I were sitting in my aircraft and I normally in a constant speed, you have the RPM, the prop, all the way forward. And if you pull it back, and as you can hear it, and hopefully we can get the Bonanza or one of the other planes out. And when you guys finish your projects, I'll take you out and I'll run you in one of these aircraft or take you flying in mine. But if you've never been in a, an aircraft with a constant speed prop, the first flight of the day, and we'll get more of this, but you have to get warm oil up into the prop hub. And so, and you want to check the governor and the prop. And so you do a run up, you take it up to 1700, you check the mags, carb heat, just like anything else. Then you pull the prop and you pull it back. Now, when I pull my prop back, the very second I get an indication of RPM drop, I am fast forward. I mean, I just jam it forward. Um, but you can hear people uh, at the airport don't. And so they exercise the prop and they grab the prop and pull it back. Oh shit, it just makes this horrific sound. It sounds like, I don't know what they threw into the prop. And uh, you can hear the RPM just drop all the way down. And you just imagine the manifold pressure just climbing. And they go back in like, oh, that was hard on the engine. Then they do it again. And then, you know, repeat three times. Um, so, yeah. So the, and you're not really moving a prop that much to do that. It's really surprising how little you're changing the RPM. Um, in a fixed pitch, and I was talking yesterday, I think that's, that's exactly where I left off, where we were talking about the type certificate data sheet. And I pulled up this type certificate data sheet here for 150. <clears throat> and what I was showing you is that you have, like for the 150 here, uh, the models 150 A, B, and C specifically, they have, this is a type certificate data sheet, you have a Continental O200. So how many options of engines do you have? O200. That's it, O200A, end of story. No, no other options. Um, there's the minimum grade of fuel. Engine limits for all operation 2750, that's the red line. So you have a red line at 2750, you can't go more than that. But then they give you three, at least I've only given you one page here to look at, and I'm pretty sure it's only three anyway, three, three options for props, the sense niche, the Macaulay, or another Macaulay. And so let's just take a look at the first one here. Um, let's say you have the sense niche 69CK. Not over 69 inches, not under 67.5. So there allows some variation for length of the prop. And that has more to do with damage. You can cut off part of the tip and, and shorten it a little bit. And it's still certified for the aircraft. But the static RPM at maximum permissible throttle setting, <clears throat> which means wide open, not over 2470. And remember, the red line is 2750, which is funny, right? And not under 2320. So what they're actually saying right here with this not over 24 or not under 23. In flight, you can get the 2750. Your prop will do that. But static RPM means aircraft not moving full throttle. It's gonna be between these two numbers. Now the reason why the variance is that you are allowed to repitch a prop. So you notice it doesn't say about the, the pitch or the blade angle. So you can do it. And so if you were, yeah, we talked about this yesterday. If you're on a short field, you know, you live somewhere in a very short runway, you need high RPM. RPM is power. You need the high RPM to get off the runway quickly and go. But once you're up, because it's a fixed pitch, you're not going to go real fast because you have a, a blade angle that's relatively shallow. Uh, if you were here at 10,000 feet runway, your 150 is only going to need a thousand of it at the most. And so you're thinking, well, once I get up, I want to go fast. So you will take advantage of the runway and you'll pitch it so you have more of a blade angle, much bigger bite, right? A coarse thread of the air. And so you have the, the range there. So as a mechanic doing an, an inspection, annual inspection, one of the checks I'm going to do is I'm if I've never looked at the airplane before, I want to make sure it, it, it's a Sensenich 69 CK model or the Miss Macaulay or this Macaulay. And uh, during the run-up, I'm going to do a, a static RPM check, and it's got to be between these two things. 
What does it mean if it's not between these two numbers? Uh, get a new problem. No, no, not at all. Well, you guys, you guys got a lot of freaking money, man. <laughs> no, you can't call up the customer and go, "Hey, I just did a static check, and uh, I'm at uh, 2,300." So I just squawk. Uh, customer needs a new prop. Okay, next squawk. Okay. So it's one of two things. Either it's over pitched, or what if it's properly pitched? You're, you're something's wrong with your engine. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not reaching static RPM. So it's a it's a kind of a two thing there. So yeah, well, which one is it? Yeah. Well, if you know, look in the log books. If the engine has had a history of being well maintained and there's not been a problem, and maybe you know, then look in the log book and it was recently you know swapped out or something. I would expect that. Whichever one's cheaper. Yeah, which start there. Um, it, honestly, the first thing I would do is the engine seems healthy, looks healthy. Uh, well, whatever that means, looks healthy. Uh, good compression check, um, throttles hitting its stops. Um, it's not a thousand hours past TBO with a history of problems, but you know, as it's been well maintained, then I'm going to suspect it's a prop issue. And you can repitch a um, this fixed pitch prop. Yeah, sorry, a little stroke there. <laughs> and it's a very interesting thing to watch happen. I've taken one in uh, a long time ago. A customer want a, so normally it's kind of like three, you get the climb prop, cruise prop, and then kind of a middle of the road prop. And so I had a customer who had one of the other and wanted the other, you know, wanted to go the other end of the spectrum. So he wanted it repitched. So I took it down to this place in Stockton propeller at the time. And it was just, I'm like, man, this is gonna be really cool. You know, I can't wait to see what this machine looks like. It was something off of a battleship, I think, for, for twisting. I mean, it was this huge gray thing the size of this table. And, uh, you know, the guy, he's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, you know, and he kind of looks around and he's like, all right, got your prop. And he just grabs it. There's like a, a barrel of wood and he just puts the wood in this thing and shoves the hub in there. Clamps come and crush all the wood. And it's just got this gigantic knob, that, I mean, on a, a rod. It's just from the floor and one hydraulic thing, and he just kind of eh, just kind of pulls a little bit and watches this thing. And he's like, "Yeah, that ought about do it." And he pulls it out and he puts it on a prop bench. He checks a couple stations. Yeah, a little bit more. Shoves it back in. You know, flicks some ash. Gives it a little bit more and pulls it out. And says, "Yeah, there you go." <laughs> like he just eh, the whole thing just twisted. This giant machine. It's just crazy. Wow. Huh? Yeah. Does it destroy the uh, structural integrity of it? No. Yeah, the cigarette. How often can you like do that? Yeah, how yeah. many times? Like, I wanna. I think you can do it. it there was a. There's a minimum or maximum amount you can do it. Not not a minimum. That means you have to do. There's a maximum. It's a whole other app. Yeah, there is a maximum amount. I forget. I want to say it's like three or five times. Something. It's not a lot. Not like a dozens, but you have to look at the book. It's still three to five times is more than I expect. It probably doesn't happen much. Um, you know, it's funny, when, when I had my 150, this is a slow 150, and uh, I had no record of when the prop was overhauled, per se. There was a tag in there that said reconditioned. Uh, and I'd called prop shops, and I wanted, I considered having mine repitched, as we did. We kept the airplane here, and it was slow. And so, you know, I did all of the math that you guys are doing. I'm like, okay, at this RPM, I'm getting this speed and do this and that. You know, what should I expect if I give it, you know, another pitch, go to the, the, the other end of the spectrum? And it came out to like five miles an hour. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And so, but I called the prop shop and I ran my numbers. I'm like, hey, you know, my, my correct in thinking. And he's like, well, yes. He said, but you'd be surprised. Sometimes without repitching it, just an overhaul on a fixed pitch, just recontouring the blades, getting everything lined up perfectly and getting it, you know, back where it should be, can sometimes give you five miles an hour just doing just a, a, an overhaul on the prop without a repitch. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. What's cheaper at that point? Repitch oh, you don't want to repitch if you haven't had an overhaul in a long time. Uh, believe it or not, in these overhauls, they actually, um, they sand, you know, I'll just say sand. They grind off some of the surface and it gets rid of the surface corrosion that, that happens to uh, reside on the top of the prop. Props, I guess now is a good time to say it. Zinni, they're, you know, props and instruments are something we have to understand, 
but they're just this whole different world and we're not supposed to be touching them. And the more you know about them, the more you realize, yeah, it's a good thing I don't touch those because they're freaky. You know, it's like I said, I mean, who would thought that, you know, after so many hours, you got to sand the surface of a propeller to get rid of the, the surface stresses. Otherwise, it cracks internal. I'm like, what? You know, but that's true. Oh, they're crazy, crazy. Uh, let's see. So, so how much do you sand off? Oh, not much because you have to measure all the thicknesses and stuff. Yeah, and so you can only do it a few like times. The surface, like the scratch just like puts you off limits. Right. But keep in yeah. mind that. You know, if you did this every 20 years, you do it three times, that's 60 years, you know, or every 10 years, every yeah. every 10 years. Well, I'm just saying, because like, <clears throat> if you're standing in it, it's like even a little minuscule scratch can put you off. Like, you can, like, yeah. Uh, so one degree, one degree, one degree of blade angle, blade blade angle can change RPM, Let's see. change RPM by 60 to 90, 60 to 90 RPMs. <clears throat> it is. All right, good. So now I'm going to get you while your brains are kind of fresh. Would you like a tissue? Yes. Thank but, you. but those aren't tissues. Okay. Got it. That looks harsh. All right. The, the reason, the reason. Do you want some of the spray too? <laughs> Why blades, blades have pitch distribution. Um, twist, twist. And many different airfoils. <laughs> airfoils is because the blade moves in multiple dimensions. Airfoils, different airfoils, is because the blade moves in multiple dimensions. <laughs> no, not like, you know, different dimensions, like, you know, the fifth dimension or something. Okay. So don't, Within the fourth. Yes. <clears throat> yes. What's that from? Marble. Marble. Oh. What's the thing with the uh, Rick and Morty with the, just a portal? Yeah. It's called a portal. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the interdimensional that's it, yes. <coughs> so what do we got? Different dimensions. Have different rotational speeds. Different rotational. Speeds um, at each station. Same RPM, but different miles per hour. Uh, forward movement of the aircraft creates different angles of attack for each station. So the forward movement of the aircraft aircraft creates different angles of attack. for each station. And what is angle of attack again? Okay, so it's AOA, angle of attack, is angle between chord line and relative wind. Okay. 
we're going to look at example. Example of why each station is a different angle. Why each station. You guys got a lot of phones going off tonight. Yeah, if it's for me, I'm busy. That is at a different angle. All right, keep in mind that the ideal ideal angle of attack is what? Two to four to four. Okay, two to four degrees. 15 degrees will result in a stall. Oops. What is a stall? It's, no longer it's where you keep a horse. Yes. Okay, define a stall for me. Mm, okay, it's not being used. We can talk about wings. What's a stall in a wing? No longer generating lift. You don't have that low pressure over the, over the wing. What happened? The airflow can't go over the wing. It separates from the top. There you go. It separates. So if we have a... Have a wing, and we're going up at too much of an angle, at too slow of a speed, and before you know it, the angle of attack is coming in like that, right? The air is going this way. The air can't turn the corner and flow down the wing, so it just separates off right over here. So that is not going to generate lift. So the wing is going to stall, and if the airplane is designed correctly with its weight and balance, then the nose will drop, and you'll pick up speed, and it'll start flying again. Well, it doesn't work that way with a propeller. You just start stalling out. The propeller becomes inefficient and non-usable. So that's not good. Um, where's my point? And remember that the blade angle is smallest at tip, at the tip, and largest at hub. So it's almost flat out at the tips. Well, that is true. All right, let's see how we can do here. All right, we already looked at that. <coughs> Looking at the blade angle here, remember that. Okay, this is the one that kind of hurts a little bit. I don't have any notes here, so I have to remember what the heck I'm talking about. Go with this one. We'll do this one. What's that? Show on four. Yeah, that situation yesterday. You skipped the page or something? I'm on four, for sure. We went back to three. Three was. Uh, I don't know. Some in there somewhere. I know yesterday you started right yeah. four. You're like, oh wait, I skipped the page. Yeah, well I went back. Two, no, you're good. three. Well, I thought so. Four, five. All right. Um, Ah, that's what I wanted. Okay, so this is an example of an aircraft at 150 miles per hour at 2,000 RPM. That's not relevant, but it just is. And using Pythagorean's theorem, you remember that from electricity? All right. So that was electricity. That was electricity. That was. That's how we figure out phase angles. Okay, this, if I got the right screen here, this shows a blade, uh, shows a blade at station 30, 36. What does that mean, 36? 36 inches from the hub. 36 inches from the hub. All right. So for every one foot, one foot that the plane moves forward, so this is the plane moving. So you got to imagine the plane over here. Um, so here's the plane. 
This is really not going well for me. I'm terrible draw. Okay, here's the plane. Here's a wing. Come down. There's little doors. There we go. There's your plane. Okay, and uh, there you go. It's going forward. So every every <laughs> yeah, it's tailwheel. Um, for every one foot that it's moving forward, every one foot the plane moves forward, the prop at station 36 specifically rotates 2.9 feet. So that's that one little section of prop, right? 36 inches out, which would be exactly there. It is going 2.9 feet. So about gay far. Mm -hmm. For every foot it goes forward. Follow so far? Yeah. Everybody's with me? Yeah. Okay. So, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Plane, plane moves forward one feet, forward. Prop rotates around 2.9 feet. All right, just simply using that and drawing this out, we then draw the, uh, the hypotenuse, right? And then using maths, we can figure out the angle from that, which we don't have to do, but remember how to do that. So Katoa, thank you. You come up with, that is a 19 degree angle right there. And so engineers figure out, well, we want the relative wind to hit this between two to four degrees. So in order for that to work out, this should be at what angle? 22. Plus two, uh, plus two is? 21. 21. Uh, we'll say two to four, so that'd be, we'll split in the middle, three? Three, so that would be? 22. So that should be at 22 degrees. Follow? So, sorry. 22, 22 degrees, 22 degrees. That's not bad, right? Okay, that made sense. So let me see, um, at, let me see, it's A, B, B, what's happening at B? For every, okay, same RPM, same airplane, same RPM, but now we're gonna change stations. We're gonna go to, let me see, does it have the station on here? No, let me see. Oh, 24. This is station 24. 24 inches. 24 inches. This one was 36. Mm -hmm. 36. And this one is going to be at 12. 12. 12. Does it say that on there? No. I'm just assuming there. No. Yeah. 36. 24. 24. Okay. So, all right. Same aircraft. Move forward. One foot. One foot. The prop only moved 1.94 feet. Same RPM, but instead of being out here at... I'm doing this because this is exactly, this is for me is exactly six feet. So that's exactly 36 inches to the end of my fingers. So this one is now 24, so that's right here. So it moved only just a, just a little under two feet. As we were before, just a little under three feet, right? So you got these two sections moving. This one moved two feet. This one moved three feet. Two feet, three feet, follow? Okay, so then using maths, you can figure it out that or I've moved forward one foot, prop rotated around uh, about two feet, then Sokotoa, we come up and do the math, we figure out that the angle of B is 27, so 27 plus three, this should be at 30 degrees. That's not hard, is it? So now you can see, we could do one more, it's the same thing, same airplane, same that, same everything, uh, figure out 46, so 46 plus three, so you're gonna come up with 49 degrees, so that should be about 49 degrees. So, and that's only at um, station 12, 12 inches in. So now you can see why they came up with this blade section out here is flat. This one is moved in a little, well, 22 degrees, 30 and 49 degrees. Make sense? Okay, so I just explained why that worked. I guess that was pretty easy. Questions about that? Where did you get the three from? Three. The three, four. because yeah, two to four, you, degrees. Two to four degree oh. angle of attack is your ideal. But we can go all the way to about how much? 21 to uh, 20 15, 15, degrees. 15 degrees, so after about 15. So it's going to work, it's but we, you know, we could, we could run, I won't, so don't panic. We could run through the same exercise. I said this was at 150 miles per hour uh, at uh, 2,000 RPM. We could change this 
and um, change the, I don't, I wouldn't know the numbers offhand, but we could change that to like 2100 and you can see it, it would change everything, right? Or 2200. You change either one of these things and it's going to change all of this. But what is the one thing that's not going to change? The pitch or the plating. This is going to be constant. Yeah. <laughs> so you can change anything you want. You're going to get a different angle. You're going to get a different different triangle looking here. But the constant is going to be the plate because it's a fixed pitch, it's a fixed pitch prop. So what does that do for its efficiency as soon as I change any one of the other numbers? Not good. It falls right out of its efficiency range. That's the drawback to fixed pitch. Uh, all right. So for um, example, well, for, I guess I didn't write that. This is an example. You don't have to write this, but if I don't put it, my placeholder's gone. Example of an aircraft um, at 150 miles per hour to 1,000 um, RPM. And we did the example. I went through that. Five is using USI, using Pythagorean. Theorem. Theorem. We can see the following. We can see the following. And we can see everything I just showed you, which I'm not going to write all of that. But what were the highlights? Are there any highlights we need to worry about? Not really. It's just an example. Um, but we learned that the angle of attack will change will change with any change in with any change in what RPM, RPM. RPM or or aircraft speed now when I talk speed I'm talking purely air speed right ground speed does not count Everybody follows why? I'm glad somebody's honest. Because when you're, you think of an aircraft going through the sky, the air, just like a boat on a river. So, if you're into boating, if the river is moving along at 10 miles per hour and your boat is, engine is off, how fast are you going? 10 miles per hour. Okay, so if your boat has a top speed of 40 miles per hour and you're in this river going 10 miles an hour, what is your actual 30, GPS 50. gonna say? The river's going this way, you're going this way at 40. Oh, 50. You're going 50. What if I turn around and go this way? 30. 30. But does the boat propel the boat know any difference? No. I mean if you measured the the speed of the water going by, it's always gonna say 40. Right? Because that's has little sensors down there just like a pedo tube sticking in the water and it just measures the water going by. So so that's why in the air it's the same thing. You just have a mass of air moving along with you, but you're going in that mass of air 150 miles per hour in that example. I'll try to find the video for your Oscar. The guy's sitting in his aircraft in the wind, just stationary. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> My wife and I took the 140 to this is right after Thanksgiving to LA and we're coming back over the mountains by Santa Barbara and you have to go so high to get over the um, the reserves what is it? it's uh, condors condors and I remember the controller calling us hey little 140 uh, how you doing up there I'm like <laughs> we're fine he's like you haven't moved in a while <laughs> I know <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out. <laughs> All right, fixed pitch props. Fixed pitch props are typically, and by typically, I mean always, designed for optimum, optimum efficiency efficiency at a narrow set of parameters.
And in case I didn't say it before, ideal angle of attack is two to four degrees. Um, let's see. Note the difference between angle of attack. I think in my notes, this one IV is like way out to the left. But sometimes I have a problem with Microsoft Word when I stop and come back to it in like a day or two. It's like, why, why did you just do that? When stationary, when stationary, Jesus. the outline's broken? Yes, completely. All right. When, when stationary versus in flight. I could just go to circles and squares. I don't care. <clears throat> okay, so one on ground. I'll come back to this. Go to the slide. Find the slide. This one. Well, it's not a big deal. So it's, it's just notice the difference between um, the angle of attack when stationary versus on the ground. So the propeller moves from <coughs> A, stationary, from A to B. I mean, think about it. Brakes are locked. Is the airplane going forward? No. 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 So this tip right here comes to right here. Right? And so direction of the, of the relative wind I'm sitting here and I'm not going anywhere and the prop is going around the circle, where's the relative wind? It's zero. It's got to be directly in line with the hub, yeah. which is what it's saying right here. Your relative wind is right here. Because oh. the plane of rotation is along the line of the hub. So here's the plane of rotation from A to B. What's going on right now? Huh? Just move the Okay, don't, don't look at this one. So this is, that's not... There, you can't, that's, that's not relevant. I'm playing the attached to the plane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everybody follow? Yes. Okay, this blade moved to right here. Okay. Yeah. So the relative wind is right here. Follow? Okay. What is my angle of attack? C. It's horrific. It's bad. Is this, is this going to work? No. No. All right, Barely. it's going to stall out. More than likely. Very little lift, yes? Yep. Yeah. That's the point that it's trying to make. So on the ground, angle attack is very inefficient. All right, now let's start rolling down the runway. As soon as we start rolling down the runway, everything changes. So when it's on the ground, if we, had to, we wanted to draw the, the, the triangle with Pythagorean's theorem, Right? It would have looked like this. And so there is no forward movement. So there is no triangle to try and figure out the angle of attack. So it doesn't work. It's just, yeah. But now we start rolling forward. And here's our Pythagorean's theorem here. It rolled forward that far. Come up here. We can figure out that angle. And now we start to get a true angle, which is here which actually gives us a reasonable angle of attack, which will allow air to flow over the propeller blade. So you're not going to get much lift until you start rolling forward. It's very inefficient. I guess it's the same thing here. No forward motion, a little bit of forward, all the way forward. Well, it's as far as the well, let him ask a question. Well, so, uh, <laughs> so I know this going this way, right? So this way, yes. Yeah, right. I'd go this way. So why is the relative airstream this way? Right here? Yeah. Because... Why not the opposite way? Oh, why not this way? Yeah. Because the prop's going this way. So fast. Oh, so it's... Okay, got it. It's like putting down. Cutting off. Yeah, so mm -hmm. for the wings, the angle of attack is absolutely going to look like this. This is the angle of attack for the wing. It's going to come about that direction. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. Yep. So 
So when I'm not moving, the angle of attack is this way. It's coming up like this. But then I start moving, and it's going to come this way. All right, so I tell you all that to tell you that, number one, when you're static RPM, static RPM is when it's not moving, that's A to B. My RPM is going to be relatively low. So that'll be low RPM. It's going to give you low RPM, that static range. Then as I start rolling forward and I get more efficiency out of the propeller, what's my RPM going to do? Okay, increase. Increase in RPM. So it's going to increase. Less drag. Less drag. Sure. So if somebody were to ask you, does the angle of attack change on a fixed pitch propeller as the aircraft speed changes or the RPM changes, the answer is? Yes. yes. Yeah. Got one other one. Yeah, it's the same thing, I think. Let's see. Yeah, we don't need to do that. It's the same theory. It's a different slide if I want it. All right, so what do we need to say about this? Uh, okay, one on grounds. We talked about in ground. Um, I don't want to write because in my notes, the propeller moves from A to B. Angle of attack is inefficient, so I can do that. Angle, angle of attack is inefficient in flight. Um, angle of attack is efficient and there was another example we don't need to do. Ah, we'll just look at it and I'll tell you. What was this one? My other example. Uh, blade angle is 20 degrees. RPM, there you go. RPM is 1200, so 1220 degrees. Uh, with no forward motion, the, this is no forward motion. No, no forward. What is my, no forward motion. Angle of attack is 20 degrees. Is that good or bad? Bad. Okay. No lift. With 50 mile an hour forward motion, okay, now we're moving forward at 50, so now we can get a triangle out of it. 50 mile an hour, my angle of attack is? 0.8. Uh, I think that's supposed to be just 8. 8. It could be. Yeah, I think it's yeah. supposed to be just 8. Yeah, 0.8. Okay, 0.8, 1. Oh, yeah, because it's. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we have to figure out mathematically. Probably point eight. Anyway, um, same same forward velocity, but we increase the RPM and we come up with. This is a low RPM, so it's pretty low. So, um, twenty. I think it's eight. It's not important, but you can see that where is the only place where it gets efficient? If it's eight or point eight, is that good or bad? Either which way, it's like mm, no thanks. So, here's where it's good at a very narrow range. So look, we only changed it by 300 RPM, and we went four degrees. four degrees no matter what the answer is, right? Oops. Wow. All right. Uh, let's see. We need to do this. So we can see that fixed pitch props are only very efficient in a narrow range of speed and RPM. We already said that, right? Mm -hmm. Dive or climb, this changes the angles. We already talked about that. An extremely steep dive with high speeds, the blade can have a negative angle of attack. And a climb with lower speeds, the angle of attack is increased. I could write that because that's, so I think that was one, two, we'll make that point three. So dive or climb. Dive or climb. Um, obviously, this changes the angles. Because you're changing the angle of attack on the wings, you're changing the way, so the airplane going forward like we're talking about, now it's going up, that's going to have an effect on the angle of attack that's coming at the blade disc. Now, a lot of times I'm going to talk about the blade disc, 
And when I'm talking about that, it's just a way of thinking about the propeller as a whole. Um, the, the arc that it makes, the disc, you think about that as now just a solid piece of metal because it's spinning around, right? Because you can't put your hand through it, so it's a solid piece, right? So that disc, instead of going this way, is now going this way, which changes the relative wind on the disc. And so that would have an effect on the angles. So in an extremely... What? How fast are you? Well, you wouldn't be the first person I rushed to the emergency room after a prop strike. Really? Yeah. Here? No. Where? Uh, place I worked for. I always get like TikToks of like people having like near misses with props and everything, or like helicopters like walking in front of them when they're on the ground. And they'll walk, walk right under the way. And uh, oh, yeah, I've seen videos of people getting haircuts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. See, some of these people hadn't had 309, so they're kind of like, they don't know. Ah, now I see. This is the big three way out here. So all that other stuff was like, you know, two. This is under two. So, yeah, those four, five, and six are supposed to be under one, two. Pitch. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Pitch. So pitch is often used synonymously for blade angle. Right, pitch. Pitch is often used used as a synonym, meaning the same word for blade angle, for blade angle, blade angle, but that is not correct. So blade angle, blade angle is what? Okay, is the angle between, is the angle, blade angle, is the angle between, between the face or cord and the plane of rotation. So it's an actual angle, measured, right? So an actual measured angle. Pitch is the distance the aircraft will move forward with one revolution. Distance the aircraft will move forward with one revolution of the propeller. So pitch, pitch is measured in inches.
you can't really say my pitch is four degrees. No, pitch is pitch is actually in inches. That wouldn't make sense unless it moved forward four inches. So that's two different things. A, B. This is a repeat. Well, I'll say it twice then. Drilling grass. Yep. Pitch is how far, because if I don't you know, follow my outline, then you get all mad, how far the aircraft will move forward in one revolution based on the blade angle <coughs> at the 75% station. And we can take it one step further and geometric pitch is the proper term. Geometric pitch is the proper term. Which is the theoretical distance Well, I'm not going to write all that. Uh, it is a, it is a, I'll just leave it at that. It's the theoretical distance. It's going to move in one revolution. <laughs> sure. Theoretical distance, an element of a prop, would move forward in one revolution if it were moving along a helix having an equal, uh, having an angle equal to the blade angle, which is to say it's theoretical. Pain you by the word. Yes. It is linear in inches. I already said that. And now it's break time.